after many trials and tribulations and some struggles, we made it. But before we get into this fight, let's take a step back and start from the beginning. Welcome to the Crumbling Farm Missoula. We're going to do a little adventuring, some cool dodges, and I'm going to show you the best counter for Malakath. This guy's number one. Once you get to the first side of Grace, go past it, you'll see him. Quite a challenging opponent if you haven't really fought too many dragons, don't know the tactics. I highly suggest staying behind his legs. It's much easier to see his attacks coming and easier to dodge him. Horror Frost Stomp is a great go-to for anyone who doesn't want to use regular spell casting, but you want to get your intel up. It really helps with a lot of fights. Frost buildup is a little underrated in my opinion. I'm glad I didn't skip this fight. There's a few things that I hadn't seen before, and I love this attack. I love just the look of it. It's beautiful. And with a few more Horror Frost stomps, I took him out just like that. Give me that ancient dragon smith and stone. I deserve it. Thank you, thank you. And with one of many dragons out of the way, let's move forward. I made a new friend, but he wanted to show me I was nothing, even though I just killed a dragon. Had a couple cool dodges here and there. It wouldn't be souls unless you made a couple mistakes along the way. So after all of that, there is one other important thing before we get to the fight that I wanted to show you guys. Make sure you're following the path that I'm on right now, and also make sure that you've done all Volcano Manor quests. Well, really, just the ones that Tanith gives you and Bernal's quest. Once he invades you, beat him, and you get that blast from his claw. On to the fight. Garank. Well, no. Beast Clergy. I call him Garank. I'm uh, Clergy, whatever. It's Garank. First phase of this fight, honestly, is a lot harder than the second phase. I could give you some pretty good advice, but it is partially dependent on skill level as well. I mean, even I get hit a couple times here. I'm not perfect. Not like these guys that do the insane four hit builds and stuff like that. No, we take time with these fights. It's, it's funner. And I found out a while ago, when you just kill a boss instantly, you miss a lot of pretty amazing animation. Wasn't a lot to it. He does jump around a lot, almost as much as Malekith. And that dagger, it's got some reach on it, even though it's just a dagger. My only real focus here was getting him frostbitten. Once I got him frostbitten, I just wanted to do as much melee damage as possible with my Uchigatana plus 25. It does, of course, have cold scaling, so that definitely helped with the frost build up a lot. He goes down, and the fun. I was pretty shocked a few times. This being one right here, I really did not time that well. In fact, I was almost 100% sure that it didn't work, which is why I got hit. Most of his attacks are easy to dodge. Just gotta watch his movements. I got hit there just because I was healing. Then bam, hit him with another parry. That is the Blasphemous Claw, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you need to get this. It makes this fight so much easier. Check it out, look at the range on it. Another Blasphemous Claw. Best part about this fight, it's already over. That is what shocked me. That was very, very quick. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And check back for more. We're not done with the samurai.